It's playoff waiver time. There's a bunch of running backs that we are going to discuss and some nasty wide receivers that you may or may not want to pick up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. Someone with a hot rod outside (laughs) the studio, revving their engine. I was behind a, uh, like a a classic Pontiac Grand Am on the way in. Okay. You know, like the kind that Papa Josh would be driving around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the 80s when he was, like, living it up? Yeah, with stuff hanging from the rear view mirror, yeah. We were just being born in the 80s, but he was, that was kind of his peak. Someone is get. I don't know if that's coming through, but they are getting after it. I mean, there is an engine I mean, like, outside. There's a car show outside. So what else do you do at nine in the morning? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, and, and don't drive. Just, just, sit just out, stay right there. Just sit out and rev and give it some gas. Uh, Papa Josh had a Firebird, not a Grand Am. Oh. So I mean, I almost nailed it. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, man. That had to be like I, just cliche. Oh yeah. It had to be his saddest day of his life when he let that thing go. You or know what I mean? Like he probably was, wrecked it. There's no way he didn't pull up to the high school and then yeah. get out and lean against it I with a jean say, jacket. Are you familiar with uh, Billy Madison? <laughs> that <laughs> when is, he pulls up with the Ario speed wagon. And I bring him up because, as fate would have it, in most perfect form, Josh the Betrayer mm-hmm. and my. League of Record team are now meeting in the semifinals. One of you will be in the championship. One of you will not at the expense of the other. And you have created a wonderful stack for him in Justin Fields and DJ Moore playing against the Arizona Cardinals this week. So we'll see if Evil wins. Uh, Based on that matchup, it should. It's got a good chance. (laughs) So we'll we'll find out. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, he is he's already started the his best attempts at trolling. Andy came into the studio this morning and had a piece of paper taped to his monitor that w- highlighted his running back's poor uh, matchup schedule. Yeah, yeah. It, coming from the guy that has Derrick Henry from last week. So we'll see. Um, it's going to be good versus evil, and I am taking the place of good in that situation. I'm rooting for you, which I – this is a new feeling for me. Yeah, you had the capstone, mm-hmm. the exclamation point on the fart of a weekend that you had. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. a hot blast. It was. I mean, uh, you were the Arthur Smith of fantasy managers. Yeah, it, uh, it, my, my, my week was uh, not good. Not good at all. Uh, but, you know, I now I live to root for you, Andy. Yeah, I don't – how do you even wake well, up in the hold morning? Hold on, hold on. What about your boy? Uh, yeah, Mike made it through in Dynasty. He's I will, alive. I will uh, root for you as well where you are Thank alive. You. Thank you. We are going to try to help you out today. we got a waiver yeah. show. got a Monday night game to recap. we got a giveaway going on. We're giving away a signed Travis Etienne jersey and a bunch of fantasy footballer swag. It is free to enter. There's a bunch of ways to enter at footclangiveaway.com. Uh, I think we got a couple weeks left. You want to get in there? And uh, that's footclangiveaway.com. Now, we, we've we added a couple of things in there, just free things you can do to help the show, a couple votes for a couple awards. It we, That was just added, right? So, like, the people who already entered the contest, can they go back and get more uh, more tickets? They here? can go get more entries. Yeah. Yes. So, so if you've already entered, good point, Mike. You can go to uh, footclangiveaway.com, click a couple of links. We got nominated for the Sports Podcast Awards, and there's a couple of ways to earn some more giveaway entries like i said waiver wire today nfl news to talk about let's start with the monday night game almost upset of the week <laughs> seattle yeah. knocks off the eagles jason you had your uh surprise at the pick and yeah um, that means it's good that's why i went and <laughs> bet it immediately thank now, you again i didn't think i'd have drew Locke behind center as my uh well you also didn't think that the other guy would 
be very questionable to play. No, and and uh, look, Kenneth Walker had a big game. Kenneth Walker was nineteen for eighty six, looked great on the ground. Yeah, that that's the highlight. I mean, the the at least in our league scoring format, the Ty Chandler over Kenneth Walker worked out by a point, but Kenneth Walker looked fantastic, and it was the he's clearly over the injury. Zach Charbonnet was an afterthought. Twenty two to four. That was the uh Was that the opportunities? Opportunity count. Yeah, he he was an afterthought. This was Kenneth Walker's team, which that is incredible to see heading into next week. That you can I I, I don't know if there are people out there with like me where you kind of had a pivot option from Walker. I was terrified to play Walker, a banged up Walker against the Philadelphia Eagles. But this is this is great for next week. Uh Jalen Hurts he was he was pretty good. Scored twice on the ground. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the tush push, but what's going to happen in your like fantasy universe? I we haven't played that out. Like I believe I saw a, yeah I saw a stat that they're like fifty nine of sixty four before yesterday in completing the tush push. Um, yeah, he I mean, scores. It, I mean, most of his rushing touchdowns come on the tush push. Uh, a vast majority. Like, will that? It'll it'll have a massive impact on his fantasy value. I mean, you you the the issue is when you are at the one right now. It is a one hundred percent call. It, it, they they do it every time. There's no longer this fear of like, oh, I really hope they quarterback sneak it. No, it's like okay, they will quarterback sneak it. it when when Swift went down on the one, which also, thank you, Swift. <laughs> you are amazing <laughs> at going down at the one. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it when was he like went down, he was the trying one, to burn the clock. He fell down so quickly. It literally was when that happened. I I jumped because I got a touchdown. Like that moment was That's me scoring wild, the touchdown. Yeah. And so yeah, next year if it is outlawed, you'll have to you'll have to look at Hertz a little bit differently. It's not like he won't ever score from the one. They will QB sneak very but, successfully. But they will they will call other plays. They will hand the ball off to a running back, which is a good play at the one. The only, thing, the only thing that they could ban is the pushing of the tushing. Right. right. But that doesn't stop Jason Kelsey from turning his legs or, you know, Jalen Hurts from turning his legs. So he he could still sneak it or jump over well, the line. I guess is, is Jason Kelsey back next year? Yeah, that is a question. The, uh, the re receiving game was not helpful for fantasy. No. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Tyler Lockett. You know, Metcalf was okay with his five for seventy eight. Jackson Smith and Jigba with the incredible touchdown mm, on an incredible catch. throw by Drew Locke and uh completing the upset. DeAndre Swift, if he had scored, you'd have been happy. He was eighteen for seventy four. It's it, it's okay. He it's caught fine. a caught a couple passes. Like he oh yeah, he did. And for get one this, yard? <laughs> Will Disley did not score a touchdown. No, no. the bet is over. <laughs> I did I did text Jason, as a reply to him sending me $400 that we can end the bat. And then he said, you know what? Let's end it tomorrow. Let's see if Disley yeah. can get me back on we the board. Complete the week. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, it's only fair. But that's it. Yeah, the bet's over because Jason's broke. <laughs> Anything else from this game you guys want to talk about? I mean, Jalen Hurts played through the illness, but they've lost three in a row. They've lost three in a, in a row. I don't think anybody, no Eagles fans should be panicking. The, the, the San Francisco 49ers did this. You know, they were on fire. They were the best team in the league. And then they lost three games in a row. And then they recovered because they're a great team. The Eagles are a great team. And uh, it wasn't an interception. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. That would be the Julian yeah. Love interception. We, Jason just, had some strong We, we won't get into the, into the debate of it. But Jason, Not a debate. I don't understand. I'm, okay, that's fine. I'm, but I'm saying we won't talk about it. We will just say that Jason, Jason was – a furious man he was fuming because he wanted it was I, funny because it was like it, it wasn't gonna help you man i was, it was gonna say done. if it wasn't an interception they had six seconds from about the 40 you had to get 10 yards for a field goal yeah but you were and in then overtime six baby. seconds would have been okay pretty tough to get down but um there you go jason shared his opinions it, on twitter it, it was a stupid throw oh yeah just run up the middle you have a yeah, timeout I don't know why you throw Call a timeout kick yeah. a field goal go to overtime eh whatever <laughs> Not an interception. <laughs> All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. 
Jamar Chase likely to miss some time due to the AC joint injury. You're not going to have him this week, most yeah. likely. That also impacts uh, if you've been <laughs> riding wild with Jake Browning. Like, I, it changes that stream possibility. Yeah, uh, obviously, T. Higgins is now back, and T. Higgins could become a somewhat reliable play, but it was the addition of T. Higgins next to Jamar Chase that allowed Browning to have a little bit more success. I I would have a really, really difficult time It is streaming Browning. It's Pittsburgh. Yeah, the matchup is fine. Yeah. But without Jamar Chase... In the second round of the playoffs, that would be tough. Like, we're talking our streaming candidates today. There's another guy just as nasty and dirty and widely available that I would be happily start over. D'Amico Ryan said, C.J. Stroud remains in the concussion protocol, and the team will see how he progresses through the week. Saw another report that it was – the fact that he wasn't, like, practicing likely means he's still dealing with headaches. And so C.J. Stroud's – availability will still be very much in question. They play Cleveland at home in the playoff race. They did win with Case Keenum last week, but that is a closely monitored situation, especially for things like, I don't know, confidence in the Cleveland defense or in Noah Brown or in Dalton Schultz or in even Devin Singletary and then moving the football. Yeah, I was going to say, you could even go to Amari Cooper and David Njoku. If, if Stroud is there, that they become better plays from uh... – you know, a, a assumed higher total score. For what it's worth, right now Houston is favored by two and a half at home. Okay, so then they, really, so then they're big. Vegas I think they're CJ Stroud should be back. And giving credit to Houston and what they've done. I mean, they did win with Case Keenum, and their defense is playing well. Isaiah Pacheco, good to go for Week 16. That's it's so funny because like last, there were two pieces of news that came out at the same moment. The piece of news was that. Well, Isaiah Pacheco had to have surgery. So he's good to go. He'll be back this week. It was like, well, usually when we hear, oh. They should have done that surgery two weeks ago yeah, and it brought him right back. I don't understand. There's You could do surgeries yeah. to make sure you can play immediately? Cool. <laughs> uh, this is unfortunate. Keaton Mitchell diagnosed with a torn ACL. Yeah. Oh, gross. That play. I accidentally saw it. I avoided it on purpose. And it then, is pretty brutal. Mm. Taylor Heineke will be the new starter for the Atlanta Falcons because that was the problem. It was. I mean, it kind of was, but it, it wasn't just Desmond I mean, Ritter. Yeah, Ritter's interception at the end of the game was something special, but this he is, uh, you know, okay, Taylor Heineke's up. Chris Olave didn't practice again. Uh, That's a Thursday night game, right? Yes, sir. Yikes. And then Tutu Atwell cleared concussion protocol. Should be back. Affects your Demarcus Robinson. Yeah, that's more of a situation. Take that away. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Put me in, coach. Now that I think about it, Jason, you're you're – attention to whether that was an interception or not means that you had hope oh you still had hope in your heart you good for you you needed a touchdown from Devonte uh -huh. smith from jalen hurts uh -huh. i mean you were your odds one had to be about one percent at that point and that means you weren't retiring i was watching every second and it you and, still believed and and my horse in the race is the reason that I am positive it was not an interception. Not because I needed it to not be, but because I watched that thing 800,000 times. I watched from every angle. People saying, no, you're you're showing a clip from before. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Watch every angle. I thought I saw some pellets on the on the TV. Yeah, no, you didn't. I think it's from the the other player's knee. Yep, that's what that's where I the pellets Jason... came from. I, I'm not – this isn't a debate. That's what – like, we move on. I mean, it was an interception – on well, paper, like it, it's official. It's done, whatever. <laughs> but it, why, why is this back? I don't know. Andy brought it up. I'm just saying it's. <laughs> it wasn't. His foot did not hit the ground. It's clear and obvious. I yeah. It's funny because you took the opposite approach with the um, the Ridley touchdown. Yeah, I just I just see truth. It's fantasy football is funny because I'm up against. I was playing against Brooks, and as the Seahawks, I mean, DK Metcalf had done very little. And that's that's who I'm on watch for, but they're driving. You know that the 
the eventual game, the touchdown that won the game, I'm where I'm watching very careful. I'm like, I'm doing the math. I'm like, okay, he needs he needs 13 points or so right here. Where are we at? Because we have a two point bonus for a 40 yard touchdown. I'm like, holy crap, we're still in range of one bomb of DK Metcalf destroying my soul. And then as soon as they closed over the 40, it was yeah. But yeah, there, I there, mean, there's still that twin. Did you have a twinge of hope, Brooks? No. Okay. Good. No. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. The the uh, we had a listener that it was going back and forth at the end of the game, where where like the JSN touchdown, um, you know, put them ahead, and yep. then Jalen Hurts rushed the football on the final drive, and that put them behind. But then Jalen Hurts threw the interception, and that put them back ahead. I mean, crazy fantasy makes games like that really yep. exciting. All right, into the waiver wire we go. At the running back position, there are, you know, quickly mentioned but certainly not available in any of your playoff leagues. Ty Chandler, of course, he's not there. If he was, he's got to be your top priority. He might be there. He might be there. Definitely look. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've been in leagues where I'm surprised, uh, but <clears throat> he's the clear and obvious pickup. You'd You'd dump your fab. I know Madison is supposed to be – Maybe coming back, I do not expect Madison to be back. I do expect Madison to be back, but I don't expect him to be a better play than Chandler. You expect him back this week? I Correct. Mean? Okay, because yeah. he'll come back, but I, I just Yeah, the last report said that he it looked like he could um, rejoin practice this week, and he just was – basically O'Connell was saying he doesn't know who will be the starter yeah, there was, on o Sunday. O'Connell was speaking very highly of Chandler. Yeah, it said that he's going to be a guy they see featured – as a featured role of the offense, which is great. Uh, this big news for Ty Chandler managers. Looking more towards actual available players, Justice Hill is near the top of that list. It's not an exciting pickup. They play San Francisco. But, I, I mean, when you look at options and potential starts at running back, with Keaton Mitchell leaving, Justice Hill already getting a bunch of snaps, it's a shot in the dark you could take. And the the I, it's it might actually be end up more exciting because they're playing San Francisco, they're playing Miami next week, and Justice Hill will be the passing the downs, passing downs yeah. the guy or some. I mean, against San Francisco, can you see the Ravens trailing? Absolutely. And if they're trailing, it is definitely not Gus Edwards. It will be Justice Hill. So it, I, I agree. It's not a uh, an incredible pickup where you're so psyched that you got Justice Hill, but I think that he could end up with a bunch. And he's, I mean, he's the two minute drill guy. He will, There's, he will have. He so, should see some opportunities. He will have so many snaps that are irrelevant. I mean, he will, <laughs> he will be out on the field a lot. You know, two weeks ago he was on the field forty two percent, which is a lot for a Baltimore Ravens running back. Like that is that leads the way. Um, and he scored 1.7 fantasy points. Like, I think he'll be on the field. I just don't – I'm not convinced he's good enough to put in. I mean, obviously, if you have to get someone, he will be on the field, and that's what you want. But, like, if you were to look between him, who you know for sure Keaton Mitchell's injury is, like, he's kaput, mm -hmm. or Zamir White, where there's a question of, like, well, Josh Jacobs didn't play last week, didn't practice last week but he's got an extra week, might be back this week. Who would you put in, if it was just a priority claim, would you take the shot at the upside of a Zamir White or the known commodity of a floor, if there is one, uh, for Justice Hill? Zamir White, and it's just because the, the opportunities would be there. I don't think it's going to be anything Kansas, like last week. Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, I... I'd go Justice Hill. Yeah, I, I I'll take seventeen opportunities for Zamir White from last week, but I get it. That Las Vegas plays Kansas City better than other teams do. I'll I'll say that, but yeah, those two. Chase Brown is another one where it's also uh, Kyle. It's on Christmas Day, so it's the that's on Monday. Correct. Okay, so you you'll then have that added uh, variable of. Yeah, Josh, that's a problem. Josh Jacobs gets an extra day, and you won't – like the Sunday matches mm. will be done, and you won't know. So maybe prioritize Hill, but then if the news – if we get more information or news Bo – Both are should be picked up. Yeah, and, and don't forget uh, Christmas games mean christmasfootball.com is in play. <laughs> so you can go Do to we? christmasfootball.com. <laughs> is it still running? It's still up and running, baby. Hey. 
Christmas Make sure you football. check it out. What a good one. One website. of the best websites I've ever been to, Christmas Football. Are we sure about that? I'm, uh, I'm positive. Oh, yep, me too. <laughs> what a good site. Uh let's let's bring up some more conversations here. The running back situation in Indianapolis is in flux. You have Zach Moss who says he's going to play through the arm injury, miss time. You have Jonathan Taylor, who people, I think, are holding their breath. He like, could do, be back. Do you expect him to be back this week? I do expect him to be back. It is not a guarantee, obviously, but if you just follow the transactions, they did not put him on IR. He has missed three games. Now, that happens sometimes where they they take the chance of not putting a player on IR for the hope he could be back before four games, and lo and behold, he's not. But obviously, that does mean that the initial timeline had an expectation that he could get back before missing four games. This is the fourth week. Given the injury to Zach Moss as well and having to play through that, I have hope that 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 you're going to have Jonathan Taylor this week. So that probably takes I, – I agree with you. I think he's probably back. That takes Trey Sermon and Tyler Goodson probably off the table for teams unless you are the manager of Zach Moss or Jonathan Taylor. Antonio Gibson – uh, probably rostered another name that you could pay attention to, but Brian Robinson could be back this week. So to me, it's like Chase Brown, Justice Hill, Zamir White That's, are at the top of the list. I'm going to ask Jay, where are you with like Justice Hill versus Chase Brown? Chase Brown, rookie running back for the Bengals. Uh, give me the juice, man. I mean, these Chase? are – Yeah, Chase okay. Brown has not played a ton. It seems like he has because they are giving him opportunities yeah. when he's on the field. But Ten I, opportunities this past week, 11 before that, nine before that, and – I mean, even though he's very similar to Keaton Mitchell and to Ty, Ty Chandler, we're seeing these kind of uh, just explosive speed guys really have a, a success on limited touches as as rookies. Um, Chase Brown has looked the part. So against Pittsburgh, I would rather have Chase Brown than Justice Hill personally. Okay. The, yeah, and then you have you do have you carry upside that Justice Hill does not have in the sense that like if Gus Edwards goes down to injury justice hill is you know he He's gets funny. a little bit yeah. more but he doesn't go to the moon whereas if something happened to joe mixon this week then your championship week chase brown could be a league winner um i also think chris rodriguez jr is a name worth bringing up if if uh if brian robinson does not play um antonio gibson i don't know if he was benched or hurt or what but you know it's they it, went away from him they yeah. went away from him he's always a fumble away from benching himself um, and he is a player that's widely available. And then just final discussion here. What do you do with like Jarek McKinnon with Isaiah Pacheco back and the kind of the narrative that the, the Chiefs were letting out there of we've been getting Jarek McKinnon more ready for this time of year. Is he still – You're saying whether you drop him or not? I'm, or pick – I mean, he's, he's a sub-50% roster guy, so there's a chance he is out there. Are you – if he happened to be out there versus these other players we're talking about, would you prioritize him or you with Pacheco back? Is it I'm kind of no, I don't care about McKinnon. McKinnon anymore. Okay, I I would still I would certainly want to not drop him, and I would pick him up not as my main priority. McKinnon, you know, is the the fact that Pacheco is like, oh, he just had surgery. We expect him to play this week. It's Tuesday. You know, he gets out and practice and reaggravates that shoulder or something. Uh, McKinnon is great, so I, I, I would not drop him. All right, quick break. Back with wideouts. All right, who are your favorite wide receiver pickups this week? No, Noah Brown um, has to be a, a great pickup. I know that the Cleveland defense is difficult, but if the sports books are saying – with their betting lines that they expect C.J. Stroud to be there. No Brown's been very, very good for a handful of times. You don't know about Nico Collins. I don't even know if it's bad if Nico Collins, Collins comes back. You know Tank Dell is gone. Um, and Noah Brown, obviously this last week, just had a, a monster performance, 11 targets, 8 for 82 and a touchdown. Uh, he's rostered in about half a leagues, but he would be my number one pickup. Curtis Siemens scored two more times. <laughs> it's... Just, it's it can't stop. He he does play the Jets this week, so that is unfortunate. But, I mean, they've said, we've heard at least that Sam Howell will be back despite the benching, that he, there's not a ton of uh, hope and optimism there. If you know that 
Sam Howell goes out there and plays poorly, he can get benched, and he's kind of the one who loves Curtis Samuel. It's it's not the the best play, but I I, I think that you're safe with a with a type of floor. It is. I mean, these we're pretty pretty nasty here with these wide receiver pickups. Uh, but I think I would highlight again the guy. I was hungry for more from him, and Dontavian Wicks, who we thought you know had he had gotten banged up a couple weeks ago. But he did not miss time, and he ends this game against Tampa Bay with six for ninety-seven. And then you throw on top of that, uh, Christian Watson's status is still unknown, and Jaden Reed left that game with an injury. So if next week it's you know Romeo Dobbs and, and Christian or, and uh, Dontavian Wicks against Carolina, I I think that he is the type of player that that'll give you an okay floor with some upside potential. Uh- the one of the names that I think is worth looking at as well. It, he's had the targets recently. He has the opportunity because of injury, and I love this week's matchup. Is Parker Washington? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, another nasty boy. Parker Washington finished last week with twelve yards, so he's going to be available. He's out there, but he had six targets. Uh, Trevor Lawrence now is going to be you know uh, another week removed from the ankle injury, and the matchup against Tampa Bay is. I mean, they're, they're 29th against wide receivers since Christian Kirk went down. Parker Washington has been out there running a lot of routes, really involved um, in the in the target pecking order. And, you know, if you're scrounging your waiver wire for someone that you could actually throw out into your lineup and get points. Did you mention Zay Jones was hurt? I didn't. Yeah, so that's where Parker Washington's a l- little more interesting. It was a hamstring injury for Zay Jones in the fourth. So if he is going to miss, uh, the targets have to go somewhere. The New England Patriots, Bailey Zappi, looks, looking a little bit better than what they looked like before. Demario Douglas and Devontae Parker. Uh, he seems to have a rapport with Parker. Uh, Demario Douglas played 72% of snaps, had five targets. Parker had five targets, caught all five of them, and played 91% of snaps. I don't want to bury Devontae Parker just because we're enamored with the younger Douglas. Which of those two would you spot start if you had to make that kind of a nasty decision? Yeah, oh, man, that's really hard against Denver. Um, not a great uh, game plan. And, I'm, you know, you wonder who Patrick Sertan would be on. I would guess he would probably be on Parker more. Um, man, if I had to pick between those two, I, I would go with the – Hopeful upside of Pop Douglas, but I i mean, I don't want to play either of those guys. I, uh, I would personally play Parker Washington over either one of those players on this week's matchup. Mike? If I have to pick between the two, I'm going to go with Devontae Parker. Although the, you got to watch the Juju news because he was out. And if, if Juju is back, I think that it makes – both of those wide receivers very difficult to spot start. I mean, the it's it might be jumping ahead here, but the answer, even though he left with a, a fourth quarter knee injury, the, the answer might be Hunter Henry because we've now had Bailey Zappi starting two games, and we've had Hunter Henry as a top three tight end both times. And I mean, the the first time was off just touchdown power, but this past week nine targets, seven for sixty six with a score. So I think that like. If you're looking for a Patriot, the answer might be Hunter Henry. I will bring up Rashid Shahid on the Thursday game. Olave could be yeah, out. I don't yeah, want to, yeah. you know, wide receivers have great variability, but Shahid is a favorite of Derek Carr. I would play Shahid over Parker Washington, for example. So Shahid, if he was for some reason out there, at least for me, that would be my my favorite and, of the nasty boys. And we we don't know Keenan Allen whether he will – be able to play this week, oh, whether no. he wants to play oh, for no. a team that is playing for oh, nothing. Oh, no, Jason. But I'm just saying, <laughs> Joshua Palmer, <laughs> would you play him? I Wait, wouldn't. With Easton Stick? If he's uh, all alone? No, Buffalo just – look what they just did to Dallas. I mean, Buffalo's playing for everything. Yeah. Chargers are playing for nothing. Yeah, you could get lucky, but it, it would make me want to die. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I'm i with Andy. I, I – it makes sense. Maybe you're in a really deep league where Joshua Palmer does is the is the actual answer for your team. The targets will be there. Assuming Keenan Allen misses, Joshua Palmer 
is at least the number two option in the offense, but it will be. I mean, you you got it'll be rough. He had a broken play, right? Yeah, seventy nine yard touchdown, touchdown. Otherwise, he had thirty four yards. He is going to be the guy. So if you need somebody that's playing every snap, there you go. I do ride think he, dirty, nasty. Yeah, point per snap. You're looking good. <laughs> uh, do you I, think Keenan plays? I'd see. It, if health I'm wise, Keenan? no. Yeah, health wise, I feel like no. He could get back, but why rush back for a team that is they're, on the way you're, to you're a toast. top five pick, and you're playing for Easton Stick? Stats, bro. Stats. You want them stats? Yeah. How close is Keenan to some thresholds? Uh, he's pretty close to some of his career highs. He's, I think he's got some of them. He's got 1,200 yards right now, seven touchdowns, 108 receptions. I feel like he's completed the season. He has completed everything. You know, it's like, ah, I've, I did good. I did good. Put my feet up. <laughs> Heal up. Tight end waiver options. Uh, really, Hunter Henry's the name to bring up. Hunter Henry's been uh, on fire. The rapport with Zappi. You've seen it for a couple weeks here, and he did leave with the injury, but pay attention to that. They play Denver. He's a go-to receiver. He's 20% rostered. Tucker Crafts, 14% rostered. Those are the two spot start tight ends. If you got – like the best example would be Dalton Kincaid. If you had been riding Dalton Kincaid and then you just got goosed, mm -hmm. do you go back to that in the matchup with the Chargers or do you play a Henry or Kraft? Well, Henry is – I mean, he's he's set up to disappoint everyone because he looks like a smash start. <laughs> We've been saying all season, you play against Vance Joseph, defenses at the tight end position, that's Denver. Denver's great at giving up – points to the tight end hunter henry's the number one target in this offense he's been great I, I would start hunter henry over most anyone this week certainly over kincaid do you have an elevated interest in tanner hudson with um the absence of, with chase? The absence of chase which i think also, it's, i think it's sneaky yeah uh tyler boyd tyler boyd could be i mean look jamar chase commands what 25 plus percent of the targets every single week those targets have to go somewhere. Not that I love Tyler Boyd, the player, but it, that's Jake, a good point. Jake Browning will he'll have to throw. So we're talking about Joshua Palmer. Yeah, with Easton oh yeah, Stick. I'd, I'd play I'd play uh, Boyd over Palmer. And then just the cursory note that if Isaiah Likely was still out there, you need to pick him up. He's at the tippy oh, of top of the list. Yes. But um, and da and Darren Waller as well. Would you play Waller over Henry or Kraft or Hudson though? Um, I I'd would be too afraid to. I do would that. order them Likely Henry Waller. Okay. Defensive options this week, there's a lot of them. What are your favorites? The favorite? Uh, let's see. I said favorites. I mean, you okay. don't have to pick just one. The Bears' defense has been really, really good. Um, they're at home against the Arizona Cardinals, whose offenses looked very bad. Um, they are uh, widely available. So they would be, of the, of the teams that are completely available in almost every league, and you're looking for someone to start this week the Bears would be my start if you're talking about guys that are out there in half of leagues then it's the Broncos and Bengals Bengals Broncos and Bron Broncos Broncos <laughs> play the Broncos uh the Broncos <laughs> play against Bailey Zappi and the Patriots who have not been scary and then the uh the Bengals get the Pittsburgh hero right Mason Rudolph well it could it could be Kenny Pickett the door is for this week? Yes. Jar. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, it could be either one, but I feel like the Bengals are safer. Um, do you want to go Bengals or do you want to go Packers against Bryce Young? Yeah, I like that one the most. There's there's, there's a lot of really good I, options. The, the, Bears one, um, the Bears one is risky to me because, like, Arizona scored 29 points against the 49ers last week. I, I know it was ugly, but they did score put up 29. So, like, they had a, when you're saying Bryce Young versus Kyler – they had a defensive score, right? Um, they had a defensive score, yeah. They did. And um I I'm just looking like, do you go with somebody like Bryce Young who always gets sacked? I mean, he the, gets sacked four times a week. The Packers have the highest floor to me. Whoever's yeah. playing the Panthers, like you just the 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 Panthers aren't going to come down and, and put up thirty points on you. Not and, possible. Yeah, it's not possible. They're they're really tough to watch. Oh, they are hard. they're they're hard to watch. They're hey, not good. They're winners. And they beat the Falcons. They're winners, guys. Yeah, baby. Um the Seahawks defense has been yeah. playing well. They play Tennessee, which could be Levis, could be Tannehill. I don't know that it matters. They're also at home, so I think Seattle's sneaky and low rostered. Agreed. 
and uh, the Colts against Taylor Heineke. Colts defense has been – I mean, they're they're a good football team. They play an Atlanta offense that is inept by design. That's uh, <laughs> the best way that I'm going to put it. That's that's really – that really feels oddly true. It, 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 it actually feels like – they are fourth. The Colts are fourth in fantasy points per game at the tight at the defense. Yeah, I don't they, think people. I think it's sneaky. They really? turn the ball over a lot. They they have a streak going right now. It's insane. I've, I I don't remember what it is, but it's like in the teens of games in a row with a turnover. Am I wrong on that? I mean, that's what our website says. It says their defense is fourth in fantasy points. That's what I'm seeing. In the last five weeks. Number two, number two, 12, one, 15, and four on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, the matchups have been juicy. I mean, it's been Carolina, New England, Tampa Bay, Tennessee, uh, and then the Pittsburgh matchup. But just, I mean, Atlanta's juicy as well. So let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. I want to start with the with Mike's pick because this is – this is the setup. Mm-hmm. All right. This is no. I'm not saying I endorse it. I'm saying oh. I'm saying that I understand it, and this is the setup that this man has given us his entire career, and I'm afraid. I understand that, but it, it is Baker Mayfield who's out there in almost half of Yahoo leagues. Perfect passer rating this last week at Lambeau, and on the season he has more top twelve finishes than Dak Prescott. Baker Mayfield, hmm? dude. Baker Mayfield has been like sneaky good. He's not getting you high end finishes like Dak has done, but you had a you had a month run where he was quarterback 11, 10, 7, 10, then kind of hit a lull. But the last two weeks, quarterback twelve, quarterback two, and it get you get the Jaguars. I know that it didn't turn it didn't translate to uh, like Lamar feeding his wide receivers but I mean Lamar really destroyed the Jacksonville Jaguars so just as an overall game it didn't get us the fantasy points we want but if if this team is going to win I mean it's checking it down to Rashad White and it's throwing touchdowns to to Mike Evans and who knows maybe Chris Godwin has figured something out after this really strange I'm hurt all week and then I dominate the Green Bay Packers <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's obviously coming off a, a great game in Lambeau. My stream of the week is Joe Flacco, the ancient one. Yeah. Um, I would love to have a young, athletic, mobile quarterback to pad my fantasy stats, but if I'm looking on the waiver wire, I find the exact opposite. I find an old, statuesque, great pocket passer. Uh, he's got had three starts so far. Passing attempts of 44, 45, and 44. They are letting him rip it yeah um he's got a clear connection with Amari Cooper and David Njoku I mean he's been the quarterback 13 10 and 9 in his three starts and now he's playing Houston now Houston's defense is not a terrible defense but he's I mean Flacco's been okay and the hope here is that CJ Stroud plays can score on Cleveland they're in Houston it's a controlled um weather environment I I think he's going to pass the ball another 40 plus times and is going to be a fine start I have the Flacco Geno Smith decision to make in a league where I lost I lost Herbert and then I missed out on Stafford and it's a thin waiver wire, so I just grabbed as many as I could. Wow, that's and, a tough And so call. I have Geno Smith, who's my streamer of the week this week. Here's what I want. I want teams and quarterbacks in the playoff hunt, and all three of the names you brought up are in the playoff hunt. Baker, Flacco, Geno Smith, all the teams fighting for a spot. Um, I understand it with Flacco. I think what's not being said about Cleveland is I don't think it's that much about, you know, the game script that's going to force the 44 passing attempts. I think it's going to be 44 no matter what. Uh, they People are underestimating the fact that they can't run the football. Like, Jerome Ford has been banged up and not good. Kareem Hunt is the least efficient running back in the game. They can't run the football. That's actually a problem. They're running through the air with David Njoku underneath and – um, Elijah Moore underneath, and and so I think that that's I think Flacco's safer than people want to give him credit for. And Houston just shut Derrick Henry down to a degree that has never been seen. So like Jerome Ford, I don't have a ton of confidence that Ford and Kareem Hunt are going to get it done on the ground against Houston. 
So I think Flacco is very safe. I think the upside is with Geno, and so that's why he's my pick. Just because he has three elite weapons in the passing game, if he comes back, they're fighting for a playoff spot. They're playing a Tennessee defense that you know is 27th against wideouts. So I'm going Geno if he's back, and then I'm back, and then it's Flacco if he's not. Both are are in play, and then Baker obviously they're fighting for a playoff spot as well. All three of those guys. You know, I would take above Jake Browning this week with the weapon mm-hmm. problems mm-hmm. in Cincinnati. I would take them above Matthew Stafford, who, look, Kyron Williams can get it done. It's a tough matchup against New Orleans. So Stafford would be in play. Yeah. I I don't have a problem with that. I, I put him in the same category as these guys, but he's not a guarantee. Yeah, that that would be really interesting if you if you had all of these guys where Stafford would kind of sort in and we'll 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 know more information as the week goes on with injuries to uh, you know all these players and weather and all of that but there are good options this week if you are in the playoffs and you were the team that lost Herbert yeah I mean I, I'll always bring it up I mean I won a championship in dynasty a handful of years ago with Alex Smith who was a backup to a backup on my team where I had lost multiple quarterbacks like you've got to you've got to just play some nasty boys sometimes yep championships are won on the back of those guys all our waiver wire rankings are on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Don't forget about the giveaway at footclangiveaway.com. we got time for a few mailbag questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Alex says, hey, ballers, playoff semifinals this week. Do I dare start Devin Singletary over Austin Eckler? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Singletary gracious. against Cleveland, Eckler against Buffalo. I would. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I mean, the it's matchup is really bad for close, Singletary, yeah. and the matchup is arguably good for Austin Eckler. I don't. I don't know that there is a combination of matchups that would make me take Eckler right now. I mean, you just saw Tony Pollard have a horrible game against Buffalo. Eckler is looks atrocious. Like if if it was against the Panthers, right? Like if if the Chargers were playing the Panthers, and the Texans were playing. Who's the toughest run defense in the league? That's San Fran, Philly. Sure. I, I I think I would take Singletary over over all of them. I mean, Austin Eckler over the last month has I I'm 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 so happy you're in the playoffs because most yeah Austin the fact Eckler you have this managers, decision is a shock. Yeah, I mean here's here's his fantasy point totals and half PPR going backwards five point eight this last week. That was the only game we have with Easton Stick. The week prior, 18 and a half. He got in the end zone, had a good week. 3.7, 6.96. I mean, that, that's just... The no Buffalo thinking. Bills, for what it's worth, the last five weeks are the seventh worst matchup for running backs. So they have tightened it up on the defensive side of the ball, and um, you saw it with Pollard's terrible performance and the, the Cowboys' terrible performance. And Eckler's a 10 and a half point home underdog in that matchup. Like, if you're Buffalo trying to make the playoffs and you're like, who could I play this week? I, you get to pick anything you want. I, I'd be picking the Chargers. Yeah. yeah. That team is like lame duck, right? Lame duck situation. Well, not anymore. I guess the coach is gone. But um, we'll see. I mean, is there a possibility that the interim situation rectifies the usage of Austin Eckler? Yeah, I mean, you could easily have a game here. I mean, this isn't like Devin Singletary is guaranteed to outscore Austin Eckler. But Devin Singletary has looked great. He has broken tackles. Uh, th- this last week, he had that 45-yard touchdown run to clinch in overtime that was called back that wasn't the reason he um, was able to make that play. Austin Eckler has looked bad. Now, the change at head coach could say, hey, all, all we have is Austin Eckler. I want you to check the ball down to him. 50 times and Austin Eckler PPRs his way to a to a fine fantasy day inefficient but just has a bunch of volume a bunch of receptions that can happen but Devin Singletary is getting 30 <laughs> hey, opportunities hey um you know and so yeah. I think they're both getting opportunities give me the guy who looks like you can do something with him yeah the efficiency for Singletary has been through the roof so that's where I would go as well how many times this question from Brian in Wisconsin oh, no. how many times have you seen the top three scoring team Miss the playoffs. The top three scoring teams? All three? I have never seen No. That. At first I thought he said a top three yeah. scoring team. Which that, I have never that seen happens. the top three. 
That is, um, that's uh, unbelievable. That's that, not okay. You might want to, in that league, introduce the play against the median <laughs> uh, line, which I will How be you voting on every every league that I play in. I will bring that up to a vote from now on. How do you feel about the idea of just letting the sixth playoff spot go to the elim- the highest scoring eliminated team? I, I like that. To me, that. I feel I'm like that, with it. that is um, – I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah. If I, you don't want to include median, which I'm, you know, I can, I see the benefits of median on every week that I lose with a lot of points. <laughs> and I also love the fact that, you know, when you introduce that, it's not simple math to understand comeback to, you know, like for divisional comebacks and stuff like that. It's not as easy as I can gain this much spot. Like that, that's the part that's kind of, the yin and yang of it is it's not just head to head and you can't gain a game with a win and a loss. And so the, there's different components, but I like the fact that maybe the sixth playoff spot, like I would vote for that. Yep, yeah. I'm I, fine I, with I, I like that as well. All right. We're going to shut it down. We got uh, more episodes coming this week, including our starts of the week on tomorrow's show. No, that's on Thursday. Thursday's show. There you go. It's Tuesday. And then we've got it's hundred. Been a long season. I, you know what? I barely, I barely exist at this point. <laughs> I, um, I am alive though. I, I've got a handful of teams, and if one of them doesn't make it through to next week, it'll, <laughs> that'll be painful. But I'm going to choose to believe they all will. And I can fill a handful of rings. How uh, from fantasy champs? How's your, uh, how's your Michael Bolton consumption right now? I've, I've gone back to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it was too low. I listened to plenty yesterday. I even worked a little Groban in there. Okay. I don't I mean I don't know how how does that work though? If you have the song. I do have the song, but I, I, any of these ballads are really inspiring at this time. You're just okay. going to make a whole playlist. I did, like you lift me up. Uh you raise me. You raise right? me up. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. lift me up. <laughs> you got any Creed in there? You going higher? No, there's no Creed in there, but mm. I'm hoping Dak and CD How raise, do you not have Creed? Dak and CD raise me up? Because he doesn't have the vocal, uh, you know. Ability? Yeah, ability <laughs> that that Michael Bolton and Josh Groban do, Mike. Or many. Or any. <laughs> so um, tomorrow's not starts of the week. You're going to have to wait till Thursday for that one. Hungry for more Thursday night preview mailbag news to catch you up on. Probably practice reports with some uh, significant, uh, you know, starter sit decisions going on including like the jonathan taylor pacheco those are big ones yeah mm-hmm. and uh the evil one the betrayer josh has jonathan taylor so i'm sure he'll be back chris olave yeah there's a lot of names coming up so if you want to enter that giveaway go over there footclangiveaway.com that'll do it for today's episode of the show you lift me up <laughs> talk to you tomorrow goodbye everybody Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.